Hi, I'm Dave Rams of Vitronic, and I wanted to take a minute to update you on Project 3D Printed MR2. If you remember from the uh, the last video I put out, I had printed these uh, little standoffs to go on the front of the vehicle, and had used those to sort of mount a, uh, a temporary splitter there, just to add sort of a custom look to it. And while it was a functional design, it did work. It wasn't a very elegant solution. What I wanted to do was come back with a sort of a part two, so to speak, right? And actually use some new modeling techniques to go from these little studs, which I use traditional solid modeling techniques, to this piece, uh, which I used using some surfacing techniques. Now, I'll be honest, my surfacing techniques were not the strongest. I am a machine design person at their core, which is why uh, these original parts were done in traditional solid modeling. Um, but I challenged myself. I knew I could do a better job. I knew I could make them look better than what they currently did. So I actually ran through the SolidWorks surfacing manual and actually picked up some techniques uh, that I found useful in the process of building uh, this model. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to show you guys sort of where this model came from. And uh, what we did, we ended up scanning the, uh, the front of my car. I know I mentioned that in the first video. If you notice right now, we're using the, the Leo scanner to, to go ahead and scan the car. And you can see the front portion uh, of the car that, uh, that we're scanning. So this is the, the area of focus. We're going to go around and scan both sides of it. Now the, the Artec Leo is a completely cordless scanner. You can see the, uh, the image kind of popping up on the screen there live uh, as he's capturing that. Uh, so uh, it's nice to be able to know that uh, you are kind of getting all the, uh, all the frames, all the images that you need out of it, and you can stitch those together later. The, the surface that you see popping up on screen now is actually one that was created from that. That's the one that we're uh, going to work with. It's actually the one that I use to create uh, both the uh, individual pieces you see here, uh, plus the conformed model, right? The, the single piece that you see here. So here you can see my first attempt uh, where we went and modeled this in. Uh, and this was that traditional solid modeling technique. All I did was just, you know, some extrude up to surfaces. Um, and then we put that, that plywood splitter on. Uh, but I knew I could do better than that. Uh, so again, I wanted to challenge myself with these SOLIDWORKS servicing techniques. Um, and then you'll see the, the end result, right? On the, the right-hand side, you'll see the, the finished model. This is what I was actually able to, co to come up with. So as we get into uh, modeling this, uh, a few of the techniques that I used, uh, initially I'm just looking at my default reference planes just to get an idea of where they are. Uh, and I'm going to start offsetting from those uh, and creating new sketch planes for some planar surfaces. Uh, and my goal here is to essentially create planar surfaces that I can then use to trim uh, the functional surface of the car back. And my goal is to ultimately kind of box that in and build a solid from it. Uh, and then I can extrude the rest of the lip, which is the route that I went. Now you can see we skipped ahead a little bit here. Uh, and essentially what I'm doing is I've trimmed those back enough that I can come in and finally build and fill in a couple surfaces and then knit that together. Uh, once those are knit together, uh, I can then come in and start to uh, really build out the rest of my solid model here. Um, so you can see once they're knit, uh, I'll come in and start building the rest of my extrusions and start to extrude that out on that angle uh, and really build out the rest of my lip, uh, add some chamfers and detail it, uh, add in some countersinks here, excuse me, add in some countersinks for um, the various bolt holes I need. I'll mirror that over to get a, you know, a proper left and right side. Uh, and then we'll bring that into an assembly and we can get an idea of kind of how that part uh, is ultimately going to fit in. Now, uh, whenever I created this part, I wanted to go um, with the, uh, the F900 to, to print this model. And, and there's a couple reasons I wanted to do that. The F900 has a, a large build volume. At 36 by 24 by 36, you can uh, obviously fit some fairly large parts across that. And also, I wanted to make use of the, uh, the multi-material capabilities that the F900 has. Uh, in particular, I wanted to build this out of ASA. Um, and the reason I wanted to go with ASA is because it offers kind of a good compromise. Uh, it gives us the durability and the strength of an ABS part, uh, but with, with much higher uh, UV stability. 
So it can stand up to um, the, the harsh UV light from the sun uh, without fading, cracking, and chipping, um, and, and tends to hold up much better in the long run. So I was very happy for that. Uh, and since this is going to be on the outside of my car, um, I felt that was a good, uh, good benefit to go for. Um, here you can see the parts coming off the F900, and actually you'll notice, right, it's a fairly large print bed. Actually, I probably could have printed a couple more. Um, so a uh, pretty big advantage for the F900 having that, that size capability. Uh, these were printed at a 10 thousandths layer thickness, uh, so it's pretty fine detail on the part. You can see they've got a nice gloss and sheen to them. Um, also note that that support, right, uh, they were printed such that we minimized that, and that was able to easily be broken away. Once I got those back, uh, I was able to come in and test fit those to the car. Uh, and as you can see, for a left and a right view uh, sort of fitting up, uh, much more elegant than the uh, the prior arrangement with these tabs. Um, and uh, I'm very happy with the result. Uh, and the fact that they're ASA means that I know they're going to hold up for a long time. This is fairly thick uh, material as well. And... Um, if you look at this, right, this is not a, a small piece, right? This is a, a fairly hefty piece of uh, piece of plastic now. Um, this is a three quarter of an inch thickness, so should be fairly durable, should hold up very well, and um, I'm very happy with the result. So, uh, just another way that uh, SolidWorks can combine with 3D printing to um, to sort of bring you the parts that you need. So, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, you guys have a great day.